Good morning. Um, fuck. Good morning. Nope. Good morning, friend. Nope. Good morning. Nope. yesterday and uh, I filmed a vlog yesterday and I hey friends um, I filmed a vlog yesterday and I was so confused when I started the vlog because I was not really having a good day I spoke about how I'd spent the week kind of making just like super base meals just to get by I, it's why I wasn't uploading spy food I my best friend is really sick um, and like obviously the world is just an inferno of fuckery and so I kind of thought like oh that's why I must be like just having a bummer time it's not like it's that part of my cycle or anything so I couldn't figure out why I was having such a hard time all week and as the day went on I ended up hanging out with my friend Ozzy via FaceTime and then I hung out with my friend Bria via Twitch and I ended the day on a really good note and I had such a good time and um, and then I went to bed really really late <clears throat> And I looked at the at my phone and it was past midnight and so I saw the updated date <clears throat> I saw the updated date and it is November 15th it's November Uh, so, um, 13 years ago, <sighs> 13 years ago, an 18 year old girl named Monica Ray Armillo, um, died. And Two days before, on November 13th, in 2007, in Prescott Valley, Arizona, um, she and I had been walking. We'd been looking for someone, um, her brother, who I was dating at the time, and had discovered was cheating on me with a girl nearby, and um, so I called his sister, who I was pals with and basically said hey um, will you come talk to your brother with me because this is bullshit and um, she said oh hell yeah and um, so she and her fiance and one of her and her brother's mutual friends met up with me um, at like a local movie theater or whatever because I was a 13 year old child <laughs> and um, we chose to walk to the place a couple miles away where we knew that they were and part of that walk involved crossing a six-lane highway at a, at a stoplight <clears throat> and I'm not sharing gruesome details. I, I refuse. Um, I understand that her family might see this one day. At the time that this happened, she had a two-year-old son who I, um, I, I assume is, is alive and well and now um, 
15. And should any of them, but especially him, ever find this, the details are, are just, they're, uh, they're unnecessary. But, um, suffice to say that when we got to the six lane highway, she looked both ways and she said, let's play chicken. And she darted. And I, being a stupid child, darted after her, ran faster, ran past her, and, and felt a car whoosh behind me. But I got to the other side of the road and she wasn't there. And I looked over just in time to, to see her um, being run over by this, this car going like 60, 70 miles an hour down a six lane highway. Uh, <laughs> But, um, yeah, that happened. And I, the, all three of us ran over to her. Cars started stopping. Um, the car that hit her did drive off. It, it ended up being an older woman who was in shock because there weren't supposed to be kids in the road. She did have a green light. Um, and it was one of the worst days of my life. And then two days later was somehow an even worse day. Um, after she was hit, I was the one that called 911. I was the one that alerted the medics to where we were. I then um, called her brother until he answered, told him what was going on, and he didn't believe me until he heard the sirens, and, and then he, he did. Um, and then he ran over and joined us at the scene. Um, she was life lighted to a trauma hospital in Phoenix, Arizona. And the next day, my mom drove me down there. And I remember her family just asking me, like, what happened? What the fuck happened? Like, what happened? And how do you tell a parent? that their child said, let's play chicken, and then ran across into a six lane highway. You, you can't tell them that. Like, hell, I don't even remember what I actually did tell them, but I, I just remember the looks on their faces. And it was up to me, a 13 year old kid, to explain to everyone, to her brother, to her family, to the EMTs, to the 911 operator, to my own family, to, to everyone. It somehow was my responsibility to, to tell everyone all the details. And um, she was put into a medically induced coma. Her injuries were extraordinary I, I mean I mean she was she wasn't like hit by the car and then and then flung she was run over by the car and like the human body is just not made to withstand that much at that speed for any reason and and um you know, the doctors tried really hard to save her. She had some really good surgeons and it, it just, she was, she was human. And two days later, I was the one that got the call from her family um, saying that she hadn't made it. 
and because of some stupid TNT phone plan at the time and the fact that I was the only person on her brother's like top five phone plan or something and he had like no minutes like I was somehow the only one that could contact him which meant that a, a 13 year old kid was put in charge of telling her brother that his sister had died. <laughs> there is no good way to break that news. Um, and there is there anyway um that day was november 15th of 2007 and i was 13 years old it is now november 15th 2020 I am 26 years old. That was half of my lifetime ago. And her son is now two years older than I was. Fifteen, he's going through a pandemic without his mom. Like he lost her when she when he was two, but he, you know, he doesn't like know any better. But he should have his mom. Uh, part of me is is posting this video because ideally I would I would like to never tell this story again um, I, I would I would really really love uh, to be able to just uh, if, if someone asks um, or if, or if it's necessary to tell someone it, it would be really convenient and really nice just to send a video link <laughs> um, or, or hand them a memoir or 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 something um, but there's there's another part of my there's another part of me that knows her family is out there and and knows that her son is out there and knows all the stupid rumors that run around about what actually happened and her family did end up hiring a private investigator a couple years later to like really find out what happened to her because it was like this absurd rumor that I had pushed her or, or that I had forced her or, or told her to, to, to run and, and And I don't know how, even still to this day, when there were dozens and dozens of witnesses who filled out police reports and two other people that, that were right there with me and saw it happen, one of which being her fiance, I, that was a 13 year old kid blamed for her murder by, by a lot of people. Not over law enforcement because they knew what happened, but yeah. Um, so I'm not like sending this to her family. I'm just gonna post it 
and this isn't for them it really truly is just for me but um, specifically to Eugene specifically for Eugene I'm just so sorry buddy I'm just so sorry I'm sorry I didn't tell her not to run I'm sorry that I didn't grab her arm and stop her I'm I stopped traffic I, I called 911 I, I, I did everything I could I'm just so sorry, dude. I just... You were too young to have lost your mom. And I'm sorry. I'm sure you've heard this a thousand times, but my God, your mom was so funny and so beautiful and She was so passionate and she she cared so much about, about the people around her and she knew I was hurting that day and she came to help me because she she knew um, that, that what Cameron was doing wasn't wasn't right and, and that I didn't deserve that. Um, but I'm just so sorry. I'm so sorry. I can't bring her back, but I fucking wish I could. I have spent half of my life wishing I could. And I, I just can't. I, I know that this is a terrifying time. There's a, there's a pandemic and everything is, is so crazy. And, and I know you're, at least you used to be living with your grandparents and they loved you so much. I, I'm certain that they still do. And I just hope you're okay, bud. I hope that you have the love and support that you need. And I hope that you know that no one hurt your, your mom intentionally and, and she certainly didn't choose to go. It really was just a terrible, stupid, awful accident and I'm just so sorry. Um, I will be disabling comments from this video. It doesn't warrant a response. Um, if, if, if you're Eugene or if you're her family and, and you want to reach out, you can, you can find my social media. I'll give you my phone number. I, I'm just, I'm just sorry I couldn't save her. I'm sorry that I had any part to play in, in what happened that day, but I just want, I want her family to know that she hasn't been forgotten, that her life has made an incredible impact on every single day of mine. I fight so hard every day to be the best possible version of myself. I try to help people. I, I try. I try to live a good life in her memory. Because I spent a lot of years 
thinking that it, it should have been me, not her, because cause she had a kid, because she was older, because because I felt like it was my fault, but I hope you all are doing well as well as possible given the current circumstances of the world, but Monica has not been forgotten. I will never forget her. And and, and to Eugene. I've never met you. I don't know you, you're you're just a kid still, but everything I I do is to honor you and your mom. And I just I just want to do right by her memory. So, yeah, rest in peace, Monica.